but when the new virus comes to them, it's a septuagesimal Sunday. We start a new liturgical season made of three Sundays, Septuagesima, Sexagesima, and Quinquagesima Sunday. It's called Three Lent, and its name, the Sundays are named after the decade of days that separate us from Easter. So Septuagesima means we are in less than 70 days before Easter. Sexagesima would be 60 and Quinqua Jesima, 50, the decade of days that separates the properties. It's a proper liturgical season, one of the seven parts of the liturgical year. Unfortunately, this season has disappeared in uh, the Gambus Ordo liturgy, which is unfortunate because it has been the fashion for a thousand years. When a building disappears after a thousand years, how do you call it? The destruction. What is proper to this season is it's a preparation for Lent. Lent is a season that, mer that must bear fruit in itself. We said too often it's a preparation for Easter, and it's like just Easter we bear fruit. No. The 40 days of Lent must bear great fruit. That's why we must prepare for Lent. And the Septuagesima season is a pre Lent, a preparation for Lent. That's why we have already the purple vestments. And if you pay attention, we don't see the Alleluia anymore. Wait for Easter. And no, the glory are in a Chelsea's day, the joyful song of Christmas. So, please receive the fruits and live with the spirit of the church in this holy tradition. This week, on Tuesday, the young adult catechism class we meet and we will discuss the uh, seventh commandment of God, that shall not steal, according to the Catechism of the Council of Trent. If you have not venerated the relic of St. Mary Magdalene, it's still time. You don't need to go to France, to La Saint-Bon, you just look around. The relic will be in tomorrow in Delhi City, and Cupertino, on Tuesday in San Jose, San Jose the Great, and Palo Alto, San Tomas Aquinas Church, on Wednesday in Los Altos and Exburg, Friday, Saturday, San Jose, San Francisco, Cabrini, Sunday is Palo Alto, San Francisco, Assisi Catholic Church. We were blessed yesterday in our, uh, our Mother of the Church, or actually in Santa Clara, to have the wedding for our little chapel. We celebrated the high mass and we were able to see closely as, as close as possible the relic. It's a significant relic. It's a bone of uh, tibia. It's on the leg. When you think for a moment who St. Mary Magdalene is, she stood at the foot of the cross. This bone was there at the foot of the cross on the Friday. She witnessed, was the first witness to the resurrection of Christ. And you know about our life prior to that. It's called our conversion, the sinner, great conversion. As Saint Gregory said, she was cold when sinning, and she became in fire when converted. Great, great saint a figure of the church by itself. So please take advantage of the, the two, this relic, the body of Saint Marguerite, uh, Mary Magdalene is kept in France because, as you may know, after the persecution by the Jews, she was shipped, so to speak, to a uh, law 
the southern part of France. So, we are blessed by this one for the California tour, the California tour. Also, you will find a registration form for the members of, uh, for those of you who attend the extraordinary form. Uh, we would like to register uh, the members of our institute of presenting apostle. So, the sheet is available at the back of the church and will be there for several weeks. So, thank you for returning the information. The last be first, and the first last. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and dear brethren, the kingdom of heaven is like to a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his field. In today's parable, we have a law of God like a householder of a father, father of a family, of a body. And he's calling each one of us and each human being to work in his vineyard. The vineyard is a church, the church in which we listen and practice the commandments of God, in which we serve, in which we must work. Work means produce good works, good deeds. The marketplace is the world. We have different interpretations in this parable. I would like to give you some. You see the the householder going out early in the morning and then at the third hour, then at the sixth, at the ninth, at the eleventh. In the literal sense, it applies to the story of our salvation. The first hour is Abraham. The first call. Abraham called him, asked him to leave his country, to go to Canaan, to the land, a new land. First call, and he left. The third hour, maybe Jacob called to raise his family and to go to Egypt to survive. You know, with his twelve children, you know the story, the Joseph story. The sixth hour, maybe Moses called to free his people from slavery in Egypt and calling his people to follow the law. The ninth hour, maybe David and his kingdom, how to worship God. In the temple that he will not build, but his son. And the eleventh hour is a call of the Gentiles and of the apostles by Christ himself. The last hour, the eleventh hour. And the twelfth hour, the evening, is the second coming when Christ will come to judge the living and the dead to give everyone what is due to him. So it's a literal sense. When Jesus says, the last be first and the first last, he meant to tell the Jews, you were the first, you were the son of Abraham, of Jacob, of Moses, of David. But if you are unfaithful, you will, you will be the last, rejected. He was forcing his passion, his rejection from God's people. 
and the first will be last, and the last, the apostles, those who will listen to Christ and follow him, will become the first in the kingdom of heaven. So this is the literal sense. Now, in the spiritual sense, these different times are the, the ages of life. We will apply to each of us. What is the uh, early morning? It's the time we have in the womb of our mother. Some are born in the very womb of their mother. Think of St. John the Baptist. And St. Bernard, his mother, felt that her son was called to great things. And it's good for mothers when they are pregnant to pray for their children that they are conceived by God's grace. The third hour is our youth, our teenagers. Some are called to receive the vocation, the priesthood, to which is life. They are young. And the fifth hour is the early manhood or motherhood when we make a choice for a state of life to decide to get married. It's a call, it's a call to holiness. Maybe it is a life, a path to holiness. Or to enter a religious life, be a priest, enter the convent, monastery. The life of our world in our life Maybe when we live our mature life, 40s, 50s, sometimes with some crisis, it's known, but also conversion. And the eleventh hour, well, this is our declining years, retirement, but it's also a time for conversion. Some people convert at this moment. And the twelfth hour, the twelfth hour is the moment of our death. When we face the one who has hired us and we receive our reward. So, I was, I, as I was preparing this sermon, I was thinking of the graces I have received in my life so far. And I invite you to do the same. Think of all the graces, the calls you have received, received during your life, either from your infancy or your uh, later age. What Jesus wants to tell, us, to tell us today is that it's not the length of time that matters. What matters is our progress in charity, in cooperating with divine grace to work in this figure. Jesus said, publicans and harlots shall go before you into the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean? Publicans and harlots shall go before you. Think of Mary Magdalene. It means that the greater fervor in cooperating with divine grace in the later part of their life as supply supplied and compensated for the defects of their preceding negligence. So what matters is how in fire we are at the present moment and in the days to go. When Jesus says the last will be first and the first will be last, it means not only in matter of time, but also in matters of worldly things. Those who are the first in honor, higher position in the world, or look for greater pleasures and wealth, might be the last in the kingdom of heaven, if they don't follow the grace of God. And the last in this world, those who are despised, the poor, the ignorant, the abandoned, the orphans, 
if the final gas flames will be surprisingly the first. You know the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. So, dear brethren, today let us open our hearts to the grace of God, regardless our age. Are we in fire? Are we working for Christ? Again, it's not a question of age. When I entered the seminary, I was already 26. I thought I was already old. But I entered the micro seminary at 10, that after I left. For what reason? Maybe because I love the world. And, but also, this is my excuse. I should not really find excuse because I will be like a man. No man has hired me. You know, it was a crisis in seminary. The minor seminary is always uh, all closed in France in the 70s. But I thought that was old and I said, but the director of the seminary said, you, you are not old, that's God's time. That's God's time. And it was not so some seminarians enter the seminary at 18. Other later on. In the institute, one was of them, he was 70. You see, there is hope for some of you. Actually, he was in the seminary during World War II. He tried, but after the turmoil in the world and maybe his life too. But he was accepted and he was ordained as priest as he was 70. Now he passed away. He was a priest. He goes to heaven with the character of the priesthood. And for many years, about 10 years, he was able to offer mass, to hear confessions, to serve the Lord in the priesthood. So what matters is to be faithful to the grace of God. Everyone, we have a chance. We have a chance. Don't lose the chance. We must turn to the Virgin Mary because she didn't lose one chance. She didn't lose one grace. Day after day, minute after minute. She was called before the creation of the world. According to the reading we read for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Before the world was created, God, I was with God. She's not a divine person, but in the dark of God, she was called. And when she came on earth, she was always faithful, immaculate conception, no delay. So much that at the end of her life, she died, as St. Francis says, she died out of love, and her body did not, cor did not corrupt. So much her love was defiant for God. So, dear brethren, let us not be selfish. Let us not live for ourselves. Let's remember we are called to work for our Lord. What does it mean? Not necessarily to work with your time or money or means, but to do everything for the Lord. Everything for the Lord. Raising your children, helping others, praying. What matters is your desires. Our great desire to convert the world. We cannot be Catholic if we have not the desire to convert the world. We cannot love Jesus really if we don't want him to be more known and loved and served. Here what is what St. Gregory the Great said about his gospel. The Lord's laborers are those who think not of their own concerns, but of the Lord's. Live lives of devotion with charitable zeal, who are intent on gaining souls, who hasten to bring others with them to life. One who lives for himself, 
nourished by the pleasures of his body, is widely reproved as idle, since he is not striving for the fruit of good works. So let us be generous. God is calling all of us. He wants everybody to be saved. On the part of God, all of God. Now on the part of man, who is answering? When Jesus says, many are called, few are chosen. Does it mean that few are going to heaven? Let me give you the answer of St. Francis de Sales. St. Francis de Sales said, if you consider the whole world, it's few. Few of them who are going to be saved. If you consider the Catholic world, it's a greater number. Well, that's encouraging. That is true, because we cannot judge for everyone in particular. We don't know, we cannot judge, but we, we believe in the Word of God. There is no other Savior than Jesus Christ. And more, He will not eat my flesh and drink my blood as no life. He will drink my blood and eat my flesh as life everlasting. So, if we look around, who listened to Christ, who received his body, this Holy Communion, worthily? It's a few number in the whole world. I heard that the biggest, the largest religion in America is former Catholic. They were called. Why did they fall away? Who knows? So, dear brethren, may this never happen to us. Instead, let us convert day after day. Let us be in fire for the Lord. Let us be missionary. Let us produce good works of charity, of faith, of hope, and works of mercy, so that one day we will receive our reward. Heaven is a reward. It's a reward for meritorious, meritorious actions. Like stars are different in heaven, there are different degrees of glory in heaven. God is just, infinitely just, and He loves equally everyone. But how do we answer? How do we love Him in return? The answer is in heaven. In the name of the Father, the 